today I just want to share with you for a moment some thoughts on marriage. I wasn't raised in the church. I didn't know about God till I was 24. My wife and I didn't have a clue about a godly marriage. So there's us getting married at 19, having a son within a year, um, and sadly being divorced within two or three years after that. We had no clue about God's plan. And so what happened was I was over living. I challenged God, read through all these different books and religions and the Bible, came to faith. My ex-wife came to faith. We got remarried. So it's amazing that God saved us. It's amazing that God restored our marriage. But the reality is, what does it look like today for me to have a good biblical marriage? And what's crazy is we sat with many couples over these years and we begin to talk about their marriage and why they came and sat with us, the struggles, the ups and downs, where they are. They say things like, well, I attend church or I sing in the worship team or, you know, my dad's a pastor, grandpa was a pastor. Maybe they were even a pastor, but they would say at times, you know, we feel like we're just missing it. Like maybe God blew it. Everyone says they're a Christian, but what does it mean to follow Christ? Because Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. So as I sit with these couples, I simply say, who God brings together, let no man separate. No, no, we know that pastor. No, who God brings together, let no man separate. No, 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 we heard you. No, do you get it? You're considering your marriage, you're saying you're a believer. And this isn't to be legalistic, this is to say your marriage matters. When I was divorcing my wife years ago, I remember people trying to help us, saying go out and party, go meet someone else. Even a friend gave some good advice and said, you know what, it's just easier to stay together. As someone that wasn't a believer, that was difficult to hear. But now as a Christian, I would say, who God brings together, let no man separate. The full picture of marriage, it begins where everything begins, in Genesis, in the beginning. And we see this picture in the garden. I mean, get your Bibles out, read them, study it, get to know the text on marriage, God's picture. But it begins with God creates everything. And God has this saying that is consistent. It says, as God created, He saw that it was good. He saw that it was good over and over and over. And suddenly, there's something we see that isn't good. It's not good that man is alone. What's amazing about this is there's been no sin yet. There's been no death yet. There's no curse. Everything is perfect. And what's amazing even more is that man isn't alone. He's with God. Every question he asks of God is godly advice. Every time he hangs out with God, it's a godly relationship. There's all these animals that aren't killing each other. Again, there's been no death. It is all good, but yet God says it's not good that man is alone. What it tells us about marriage is that even there in the beginning, God has a plan for Adam and it is to have an Eve. It is not good for man to be alone. So what does God do? He causes Adam to fall into a sleep. God takes from his rib his cell structure and creates Eve. He brings out from Adam, notice she was already part of him, she was already one with him. He brings Eve out from her, creates her, and man wakes up and is blown away, even saying, woman, look at this woman. He begins to, to sing and almost rhyme. We see the first poem right there as he's blown away by the beauty of Eve. It's important to see right here. It was bad that man was alone, so God brought a spouse. The two become one. God also brought just one woman to Adam. Men, there's not all these women out there for you. There is a woman that God has in mind, so prepare yourself now. God brings them together. Woman comes out from Adam. She comes back to Adam as his partner alongside of him. And their being one is significant. I mean, why do I wear a ring signifying our eternity, our oneness? Why did my wife Tracy take my last name, Sumner? Why even if people are truly virgins when they come together for the first time, is there the shedding of blood upon being physical? Because this is covenant. This is set apart. A lot of people I meet just don't understand what marriage is about. What is Christianity? It's taking up our cross and dying to self. In America right now, it's all motivational speaking and you gotta get the car and the house and be blessed and own the company and all these things. But Jesus said, I didn't come to be saved, I came to serve. Jesus came to carry a cross. Jesus said, if we wanna follow after him, we need to lose our life. We need to die to self. We must decrease so he can increase in us as our witness. We're commissioned into God's kingdom and now our marriage is on display for the world to see. It's a witness. So if I live this idea of my wife should look this way, the marriage is going to be this way, everything's going to be what Brian thinks, that's not God's plan. God will work on someone when they're single with himself. But now you put two sinners who have been saved, again, saved and born again and in Christ together, they become one. How is God going to minister to each of you? Through his word, through a personal relationship with him, but also through your connection with your spouse. We didn't know this, so I had to realize, okay, I'm the head of the home. 
I've got to pursue God. I've got to cover and protect my wife. This is just the way God set it up. What is Tracy made for? To come alongside me. And some of you women say, well, I don't want to come alongside my man. You've got to realize you are only here today with breath and blood flowing through you and the Holy Spirit inside of you if you're in Christ because we're living intentionally. So if I'm pursuing God and living out my call and here's my wife to come alongside me living out her call, we're not gonna be focused on other people, how much in the bank account, all about Brian and Tracy. We're gonna be focused on the kingdom and already for some of you, that's one of the reasons why your marriage is falling apart. You need them to jump through this hoop for you and do that for you so you are becoming the center of your marriage and it's not really about God. You see, our issue really isn't an issue with marriage. It is an issue with God. You see, Satan's out here to attack us, to bombard us, to destroy because he's the father of lies. The Bible says he's been this way from the beginning, but also our flesh is weak. Affairs don't start in the bedroom. They start online. They start with friends of old. I'm saying this because God has put you together. He's not calling you to separate. Why did Moses permit in the Old Testament for them to give a certificate of divorce? You know what Jesus said? It was not this way from the beginning. This was not how God intended it from the beginning, but the reason that Moses allowed it was because of hardness of heart. They weren't filled with the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. My heart was hard if I lived in the Old Testament. I could have divorced in the Old Testament because it was all about me. I want to get away from this woman. I want someone else. I'm going to do this. So Moses permitted it because of the hardness of heart. But it was not this way from the beginning. If I'm really in Christ, if I've been washed in the blood, if I've repented and been born again and I'm forgiven, if the old has passed away and all becomes new, if I'm really in Christ today, I've got to look at my wife on her worst day and say, God, that's your daughter. I'm gonna love her as you love the church. I'm gonna wash her in the word. I'm gonna go through hard times. I'm not gonna bail because she doesn't look the right shape or doesn't treat me the right way or do everything I say. Instead, God, I'm here to love you, to love her, that's my next ministry, to love my children, and then to go out and continue loving the world. You see, we joke about it, but I think some of the best advice that I ever either heard or gave to someone else was, if you want marriage advice, would you marry yourself? If you stop for a moment and consider the thoughts you've thought this year and then look at your spouse and say, wow, God, I'm blaming them for everything. I'm ready to bail on this relationship who God brings together. Let no man separate. God's plan, if you want to hear it, is he is for your marriage. He is in covenant for your marriage. God's best is definitely before you as you trust and turn to him. My wife and I had this marriage that was contractual. If she did her part, I did mine. And that's not the way the Bible works. Covenant says, even though you're dead in sin, I'm going to send my son. Even though you fall short, I'm going to put my glory upon you and redeem you. Even in your marriage, when you look to your spouse and they're struggling and they're facing hard times, at the end of my life, am I going to be the one that said I do? Or am I the one that bails and gets out? Listen, guys, God can perform the biggest miracles in your life right now. Sit with the Lord, get to know the text and the scriptures and the reason for marriage to glorify God in the world, to show forgiveness, to lay down our rights the way Jesus did and trust in God. There's people that live within close proximity of here, three or four different couples I can tell you who after affairs are still together today and got fired up, set in the right place with God, realized they were living in sin, came to faith, and now they're closer to Him than they've ever been. I'm praying for your marriages, for all those who watch this video. If you want to know more about it, we put a book out, Never Fails. It's for 30 days, you can hear about the craziness of our marriage, anger, I mean, issues with this, jealousy, struggles, all these things that you might be going through, and it goes right back to God's Word. We love you. Get a hold of us online. God bless you, in Jesus' name.